All right, hello everybody. This is Stuart Jean coming back at you from Musicians Institute in lovely Hollywood, California with Drum Magazine here. They're up in the Bay Area. We're working together on these videos. Uh, so for March 2020, we're analyzing our ability to control our limbs uh, and produce the right sounds for different styles. Maybe a producer wants a certain hi-hat sound or snare drum sound. And, you know, in some cases you may be uh, used to producing these sounds and comfortable with it. In other cases, you might not uh, be in your comfort zone and might need to figure out some issues with your technique or maybe the way you're sitting on your seat or just some fundamentals. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is uh, playing at a slow, like 70 BPM, one-handed 16th note groove. So we're going to look at the, your hi-hat hand a lot today. Uh, we're going to play a, a simple snare drum and bass drum pattern, and we will expand on it. But for starters, we're going to play a one-bar sort of, you know, R&B ballad type groove, one-bar groove. And we're just going to go th through some pretty typical hi-hat sounds uh, that you should be able to do. Uh, patterns, they're all single 16th notes, uh, you know, continuous 16th notes. Uh, but we're going to change where we put the accent, and we're also going to, that's going to get affected by the pressure with the hi-hat foot. So we want to see, one, can we do that? Are we comfortable with that? And two, are, is our groove getting affected when we change our feels, you know, our, our accent pattern, our hi-hat texture? Are we, is the groove suffering or, you know, getting changed at all? Uh, and uh, is our sound of our bass drum and snare drum being affected by the change that's happening over here? Okay, and then we'll move on to uh, focusing on some changes on the snare and some changes in the kick and opening the hi-hat. But for now, first part of this, let's just look at the hi-hat. Uh, we're basically going to play a one-bar groove. We're going to stick to playing a center snare sound. Uh, I like to play with the butt end, uh, and especially if we're going to go to side stick, which we will. Uh, you want to be butt end as, uh, like that as well. Uh, so bass drum. Again, uh, you don't need to bury the beater. You don't need to kill it. You want to stay relaxed. This is slow. There's a lot of space between notes. And um, we just want to constantly keep in check. Your mind will wander. It's like meditation. You're allowed to let your mind wander and then become aware of that and get back focused to, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be focusing on my time and, and this and that, not thinking about the new ride symbol I want to buy. All right, so, uh, so it's a good exercise. All right, so here we go. We're going to start out one bar pattern. We're going to play the hi-hat with the tip of the stick uh, on the top of the cymbal, you know, fairly quietly, but with authority still, but no accent pattern, just all, I'd say, unaccented and, you know, sort of small sounding. We're going to play a backbeat on two and four, and we got a, a typical bass drum pattern. Let's give it a shot. All right, so next, uh, I think the most typical thing to do would be uh, usually when we play one-handed 16th note groove, uh, we tend to, the easiest way to usually play it, and usually the most acceptable, is to accent eighth notes, you know, superimposed on the 16th note. So now we're going to drop down to the shoulder of the stick on the edge of the cymbal. You can go shoulder tip if you want like that. I tend to, I don't need to work that hard. You don't want to, you want to keep this motion economical. You don't want to overwork and waste energy. I see a lot of students like trying really hard, like shoulder tip, shoulder tip, and all this extra movement when really I, I, I don't have to move the stick at all. I'm just accenting it, you know. So I'm, I'm still playing on the, on the sh shoulder, but whatever you're used to doing. But obviously this creates more momentum. It's not a stagnant 16th note pulse now. Uh, so obviously the tempo is probably going to want to what? Push a little bit. A little more momentum. So we have to just maintain, stay relaxed. And while you're practicing this stuff, you might move. I'm going to move around. 
that's okay. I'm going to make this small micro adjustments that I need to make and recognize that and go, oh, let's try not to push that bass drum on a downbeat of one or whatever it happens to be or that snare drum on four. Okay, we're human. It's all good. This is practice. All right, here we go. Two, three, and a four, and a There it is. And what I'm thinking about while I'm playing that is, is you know, the pressure on my left foot, is that getting affected? Um, on my hi-hat foot, is my backbeat staying consistent? Are my eighth note sounds staying consistent? Am I working too hard? Am I not working hard enough? Uh, do I need to push them more? Obviously, there's leveling. There's degrees of how hard I hit that accent. Right now, I'm just picking kind of however I feel. Um, is my time good and all that? What adjustments do I need to make? And obviously, I would play it for more than eight bars. I would probably play that for an hour, you know, if I got the time. So, all right. So let's delete a note, an accent, a note, and let's just play. So we're accenting every downbeat on the hi-hat. Let's go ahead and take a little pressure off of the foot uh, on the hi-hat cymbals here. And just let it be a little thicker sounding. Okay, uh, and you know this one also is going to have its time issues. It might lay back. It could also push. Who knows? Is that eighth note going to kind of try to creep back in? So I just want to, you know, again, total focus. One, two, three, and. Okay, cool. I noticed a couple times my eighth note wanted to creep in after my backbeat on four. It was there a little bit. It's all good, uh, but I noticed it. So, okay, cool. Next, let's flip that downbeat accent to the upbeat. So one, two, and three, and four, and same thing. But let's go ahead and put pressure now and play it like that. Let's put a little extra pressure with the left foot. This is, you know, we're just having fun trying things out. You can come up with your own combinations but we haven't done that so let's put some intentional pressure and get a nice tight sound on that hi-hat and really pop those eighth notes kind of like a reggae kind of thing one two and a three and a four and a Okay, cool. First first bar, I didn't quite have the pressure I wanted, and I went ahead and made the adjustment. Uh, and then finally, uh, we could go ahead. Let's go pretty relaxed with the left foot and get this sort of mechanical, thicker sound uh, where we accent everything, edge of the stick, uh, shoulder of the stick, edge of the cymbal. And, y you know, you can really play with that. You could get into, like... The one thing you want to be, keep in mind is you got to stay relaxed. You're producing an aggressive, more aggressive sound, a thicker sound, a heavier sound, and uh, it creates tension already in the music and the sound of it. We don't need to actually get tense. So remember that, okay? Uh, so let's try this one. Two E and a three E and a four E and a...
okay, cool. Uh, so that's like the hi-hat. You could take all of these hi-hat examples and apply them to what we're going to do next. Let's look at the snare drum. And, you know, we've been playing center snare. That's fine. Let's stay on center snare, but let's make a two-bar pattern. We're going to play the same bass drum pattern. Uh, hi-hat, just pick what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, the upbeat one, one with the upbeats on the ac accents on the upbeats. But on bar two of the pattern, now it's a two-bar pattern, snare drum on two and four, but on beat four, we're going to rock over to the floor tom and get a boom over here. That's going to create a pivot problem. I have to hit the floor tom. I have a lot of time to get there. I have two full beats at 70 BPM to get over there and hit it right and then get back. Okay, we can take that for granted. We can just sort of swipe at the drum. We want to hit it with the same integrity as the snare. And again, we don't want the other elements of the kit being affected. So let's see what happens there. One, two, three, and Okay, cool. Very fun. Uh, definitely brought in some different physical elements to it. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we could do, same kind of idea. Let's talk about side stick. Often when we're playing one-handed 16th note ballad -y, r and stuff, definitely playing a, a side stick, cross stick. Uh, I've mentioned this in the past, but let's talk about it real quick. Butt end of the stick in between two tension rods. Don't let the tip of the stick come off the head. Keep the fingers relaxed. Find a sound and try to keep it there. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, three hits on the side stick, and then on beat four, we'll play the snare drum. Okay, or you could do floor tom. Again, these are ideas. You can mix them all up. Here we go. Two e and a three e and a four e and a. Okay, cool. Uh, so now let's get the bass drum to do some different stuff here. Let's go to a two-bar pattern. Um, and the bass drum has been playing you know, a lot of downbeats and then the ba-boom. Um, one, two, a three. Uh, let's get some syncopation in there where we get thrown off balance a little bit. Uh, so we're going to put, um, we're going to start out the groove normal and then instead of playing on the second bar, downbeat of one, we're going to play the uh of four prior to that. So a little bit of a push and then we'll have an enda on the beat, uh, downbeat, uh, upbeat of two and then we'll have no other bass drum. So there's a lot, a lot of space, a lot of chance for error. Uh, you know, playing fast and loud, a lot of notes, no one notices, but when there's a lot of space between beats and you got all this time to think, you also have all that time to prep and think ahead and let's get let's nail this let's really be accurate with our note placement okay here we go one two three and four yeah. Um, okay, let's add the hi-hat to that mix. We'll play the same thing uh, on the kick and snare and hi-hat. Um, hi-hat pattern, accent pattern, just do whatever feels good for you. You can always do all of these bass drum patterns and snare drum changes with all the hi-hat patterns, but that would be an exhaustive video, so you can do it. Um, so let's add uh, like a hi-hat by itself um, on the end of one in the second bar. And then on beat four, I like to do this. This is, you know, there's a lot of space here, but we are playing these constant 16th notes. On beat four of the second bar, we're going to play the snare drum and hi open hi-hat together. 
So four E and a. Uh, all right, so now we have to relax the leg. We have to let the hi-hat sound. It can't be like that. It's going to be. And then on the uh of four, so four E and a uh, one. And then we're going to hit it, hit the hi-hat while it's still open. Four a uh, one. Four a uh, one. And that's going to create problems because now we have all that space. We have to, we got some timing to deal with, and we have to come back in with our groove and not feel like the flows got interrupted. So let's try it. One, two, e and a, three, e and a, four, e and a. All right, cool. And there you have it. That's a, a simple way to, again, tweak your playing, fine tune your playing, put your playing under the microscope and look at, you know, can I really, do I really have control? You know, um, it's not really about chops. It's about control and groove is the most important thing. You're going to work. People are going to like you. Uh, you're going to have a good career uh, or a good time playing the drums, what level you're doing it at. If you're grooving, uh, it all has to be grooving. That's the most important thing. We are human. Things go off the rails a little bit here and there, but we just call that the human factor. But your priority as drummer is playing great time and producing a great sound and being a cool person. So I hope these are helping you, and uh, there'll be a few more coming this month. Thank you, everyone. Take care.